Master Yves Judd. My name is Sue Brain. And today we're going to be talking about money, but also I think how it affects our worthiness and if we feel that we're deserving of money or not deserving of money or how money plays out in the chart, how do we relate to it? And I'll be upfront, this is inspired by a very really helpful and useful and informative workshop that I went on with Carol Taylor. She did a masterclass on money. And I just thought it would be a wonderful thing to introduce here as part of our Steve Job, because Steve knows a lot about money. <laughs> and his history with money is very interesting. So we thought we'd start with this. So, Steve, where we are we going to start with this? The astrology of money. You read most of the textbooks, and my lord go, oh well, Taurus, isn't it? In it, the buzzword in it. for the <laughs> Taurus, in it. No. Um, the second house. Everyone thinks, oh, it's the second house. It's all about money. No. Mm. The second house is about what has value and worth. That's most people that means money. But yeah. it can equally be love or food, passion, sensuality, whatever it is that turns you on, that makes you feel that you are valid and that other people are valuable, as opposed to invalid or invaluable. I know it's some How you appear to have lots of things. I often find, uh, using my chart as an example, I have no planets in Earth signs, but lots of planets in Earth houses. So the outside world sees me as someone who's very grounded, down to earth, practical, and probably quite good with money. Those who know me well know that I was in debt to the, the tax service of Britain, the Inland Revenue, HMRC, for about 40 years. And in the last few weeks, I finally cleared my debt. And for the first time since I was in my early 20s, I now owe the tax man nothing. <laughs> Until the corporation tax bill comes in next month. But, yes. you know, but it's... Um, most people look at the second house and, and see it as the area of value systems. But the second house is about personal value systems. It's about your money. It's yeah. the money in your bank account, in your purse, in your pocket that you... Your income, own. isn't it? That's it, that, I look at it, the how you earn your income. But there's also the eighth house, which is other people's oh. money. This is where you get taxes and mortgage and inheritance and sponsorship and funding and bank and, and business loans and bank loans and any type of external financial input into your life. So the second and the eighth house are obvious areas, but then the subsidiary areas, like if you go, if you if you've got a job, if you're working, then it's the tenth house, and that's what earns money. Um, if you've got a packed fourth house, and you're probably going to make a good real estate agent and make money out of property yeah jupiter in the fourth eh Can yeah I? yeah but then there's certain planets that are associated with money in fact it's easiest to say which planets aren't associated with money i mean mars isn't and and uranus and neptune and pluto aren't really they, mm. they define characteristics that you use to make money if that's what turns you on but jupiter and saturn definitely the planets of business mm. And the fact that, you know, in this last few days, we've had the Jupiter Saturn sextile exact. We've had a lovely Sun Mercury conjunction with Saturn in the last couple of days, all, all sextile Jupiter. And I noticed this last night because I started my beginner's course last night on that aspect. It all happens wow. to be making lovely trines and sextiles to my son, which is pure coincidence. I never planned it, it just happened. And I just thought this is this is a classic example of um if you're doing things for the right reason yes then the money will flow and also i think it's if, if you feel worthy of it i think there there really does that comes in am i worthy to have abundance in my life and a lot of us are really restricted around that well a lot of people are scared of getting too woo woo about it um, and also a lot of people do have deep underlying issues like I'm not good enough. I don't yes. deserve. Yes. Um, and uh, um, it seems to me that 
the opposite side of the same coin of that is the seemingly insidious attempts by everyone to make everything and everyone more and more greedy. Greed is such an avarice. It is such a horrible thing. Yeah. When you when you when you're greedy, you can never have enough. No matter how much you've got, it's never going to be enough, whether it's money or food or love. Yeah, or relationships, and, sex, whatever it is, yeah. it's never enough. And greed is the is is the is the dark shadow of yeah. money. Do you think Saturn plays an important part in all in that particular thing, or would you say that's more of a um, a Jupiter thing, a sort um, an afflicted Jupiter that wants, 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 expands, expands, and then it just kind of it can never it can never have enough to for to satisfy there, there, it. There are certain aspects that that denote that one can never have enough, no matter what it is, and often that's a associated. I can never be loved enough. Oh, where's the chocolate? Yeah. Where's the sugar? Hence diabetes, for example. Um, and it's the same with money. I can never have enough. So you end up saving everything and eventually you become rich and very, very lonely. And I say to people at the end of the day, look, you can struggle all your life to be wealthy, but you're only going to end up being the richest corpse in the graveyard. You can't take it with you. <laughs> so you might as well have fun with it and yeah. use it while you've got it but and of course you want to leave it to your kids but you know you're also entitled to pamper yourself and do good things for yourself yeah. as well as using yeah. it to improve the lives of people around you and the world around you because that gives you meaning and purpose and that's abundance isn't it that's what makes you feel happy whatever happiness yes. is or i feel like i'm contrib con contributing something worthwhile here and it gets yes. back to worthiness, doesn't it? Yes, it, indeed. And and it does seem that, you know, it's easy for people to be watching this and going, yeah, but they're talking in hypotheticals. Actually, no. Just in this last year, maybe year and a half, I'm seeing through, through, through the lens of all my different clients, there's something called RAOK, Random Acts of Kindness. And what's happened recently is that three or four of my clients have turned around and said, Steve, you're doing a great job. Here's 500 pounds. Or in one case, here's a thousand pounds. Wow. And it's like, I don't want it. I haven't earned it. I only want money that I've earned, that I feel that I can accept because I've, I've given money back. And they said, well, I use it for good things then. So okay. I've been able to do readings for people who don't have any money, or I've been able to give students bursaries on the, edu on the, on the teaching because they can't afford it. Yeah. And that to me is a good way of it's the money flows. Yes. Like energy, it flows. And if it stops flowing, it stagnates. I think it's this sort of it's the cycle of giving and receiving, isn't it? Giving out. If you're constantly giving out and you're not receiving, you get exhausted and resentful. If you're constantly receiving, then you you sort of sit on this sort of sort of pile of I don't know what it is, but it's not, a, it's a tight feeling. So the yeah. whole concept for me about wealth is about giving and receiving in equal quantities. And that's being of service as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes the more you've got, the more worried you are about losing it. Oh, good Lord, yes. I think that's, so should we talk about the practicalities, the sort of, the, the astrological um, technicalities that when we've got, um let's say let's let's take the second house let's say we've got saturn in the second house now saturn is renowned as <laughs> you've got it in the second house <laughs> and, and got, the, the only retrogrades in my chart are both in the second house saturn and neptune big lessons then about oh, value i've always 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 been in debt i've always struggled for money and it's only when i went you know what i don't give a damn anymore but it started coming in. Wow. I've only, I've only start, I've, people think astrologers are rich. Ha. <laughs> I wouldn't um, say that. <laughs> I only started making money in the last two or three years properly. And uh, and it's taken me 40 years to get there. And I wouldn't recommend anyone else to do it that way. But no, um, I feel I, I'm now happy with what I'm doing. And, and yeah, you, you have to learn that what is it that really is of value and worth when you've got yes. stuff in the second house? And if it is just 
greed based on I want more because that will make me feel safe and secure. Yeah. And you're never going to feel safe and secure. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? I've got Capricorn on my second, uh, on the cusp of my second house. So it is ruled by Saturn. And I've always had a very strict relationship with money. I've always been incredibly careful. I've never wanted to go into debt because I haven't actually got it in my second house, but it's definitely there, that sort of thinking, oh, and as I've got older, my relationship with value worthiness and money has changed and it's matured and mm. i'm much more responsible with it now and i just wondered if that's what's happening for you as well it would be arrogant for me to say that i've grown and matured although i'm pushing 70 <laughs> i'd like to think i am at the same time I find, my, I find myself faced in a dark with a dilemma in that for the first time in my life, I've got money. And now I've got money. I'm thinking, well, what do I want it for? Mm. What am I actually going to do with it? Yes, of course, I'll give some to my child or my children when, when I die. But, you know, they're, they're, they're not badly off. They, they can cope. Mm. And then I realised, I know what I want to do. The, the reason I've made, been making money is because of astrology. So when I die, I'm going to give 50% of my money to, uh, I'm not going to name them because that would be flippant, yeah, but a particular yeah. astrological group who are training astrologers in the best possible way. You know who I'm talking about. Yes. And, yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And, and I'm going to fund lots of people who can't afford their training to become better, to become astrologers. It's kind of like leaving a legacy, a bursary behind. Exactly. Really a important. legacy. And I want that it. takes us to the eighth house, doesn't it? Because um, the eighth house for me is is about legacy, and it is about other people's money, and it's about tax and inheritance. And yeah. how does this play out? Would you say in people's? Well, lives? many people will look at the eighth house and go, "Oh, it's all about sex and death." <laughs> and I'll go, "Yeah, you forgot the taxes, <laughs> sex, death, and taxes." Yeah. Um, obviously, it's much deeper than that. It is the, the psychology of money. Mm. It is the psychology of what is of value and worth and how much you value yourself and what it is that you appreciate and enjoy and what turns you on. And we talked earlier of Jupiter. Jupiter in the second house is not necessarily a good thing because it can make you unstable and financially insecure because you can never have enough. It's always yeah. looking for more. I mean, Venus is the ruler of the second house. Yeah. So Venus in the second house generally gives good value systems, a fairly healthy balance in one's approach to money. Um, obvious, Saturn in the second house, one of the things I've learned about it from my own experiences is that whilst I've never had everything I've wanted, I've always had everything I've needed. That's Saturn what? for you. That's Saturn. I've always been able to put food on the table, clothes on my back, roof over my head, and a little bit of cash in my pocket, and I always will. Yeah. And for that, I'm very grateful to Saturn. This is why I'm Saturn's boy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah. there's this only... I don't like personally having Neptune in the second house because sometimes you think, well, where, where does the damn stuff come from? And, and where's it going? Where's it going? And it's... Slips through your fingers like sand yeah. and water. Yes. But um, it all depends on the aspects. Yes. And I think oh. Pluto in the second house is interesting too, because in my experience of looking at people's charts with Pluto, they've often lost the bloody lot and then they've rebuilt themselves again. Yeah. yeah. Which with is a really attitude. interesting. With a different attitude, second yes. time. Value, they suddenly begin to value what worth is about. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's amazing when that happens. Yes. Yeah, I find that really interesting. So let's go back to the eighth house because I think we're just in the middle of exploring that. So where, if, if Pluto is in the eighth, what, what, how would you interpret that in, in respect to our, our, our relationship with other people's money, with life, resources, taxes? all the all the rest of it with anything regarding pluto in the eighth house if you don't deal with your own psychological fears and phobias then 
you're going to end up as a very unstable and insecure individual. Um, having said that, Pluto in the eighth house will transform over the course of a lifetime. It will not only transform your own personal attitudes to what it is of value and worth, whether it is money, possessions, assets, property, materials, or resources, but it will also transform your attitudes towards other people in your life. And you should find, should, you, you will generally find as you age with Pluto in the eighth, but you will gravitate more and more towards people who have a similar value set, mindset as oneself. Yeah. Um, I think I think um, Saturn does that in the eighth as well. Actually, in a way, you sort of you sort of grow into it, don't you? Yes, it, and it's it's not based on on wealth. It's based on um, similar attitude and philosophy. I suspect. Yes. Yeah. Or, and and also um, long relationships, perhaps, or being that sort of sense of commitment and working through all those issues that that the eighth house can bring into relationships would you say that i would because i'm quite familiar with eighth house energy in relationships and the one thing about the eighth house i have realized is that people with a lot of planets in the eighth house take a very long time to trust someone yes trust is a big issue for a lot of eighth house people and it's not fear of being um people with the eight, a lot of planets in the eighth house are generally quite astute so they despite their fears they rarely get cheated or conned not excessively but there is this still this underlying fear and it is it is not a phobia or a paranoia because it's a fear because fear is you know what you're scared of yeah and that, that fear of with all those planets in the eighth house is basically of being lied to or robbed, would you say? Robbed of finances, robbed of the truth. Yes. Yes. This is in connection with the eighth house link with Scorpio and with Pluto, in that it's it's much more yes, no, black, white. Mm. And and sometimes you're not being lied to, but you're not being told the complete truth. And the yeah. eighth house is very good at working out what is transparent and what is not. The other thing that I've come across, Steve, which I'm really interested in, especially um, I, I had this the other day with a client. She had the MC in Scorpio. And I said, um, that, um, I, I mentioned the fact that Scorpio is often associated with other people's money and the eighth house and also um, psychology. And she mm -hmm. went, well, my work is working um, psychologically with other people's money. I train them how to deal with their money. And I was just like, you can't make this stuff up. No, you can't make it up. I was I just blown away by that. It's great when that type of thing happens. Yeah. So so also planets in the eighth cow can mean people working. Oh, yeah. Like accountants, bankers, mm. Mm. investors. Is that right, would you say? I would. And perhaps the strongest lesson of the eighth house and to a lesser extent, the second house is, is, is it's not about how much you've got, it's what you do with it that counts. Because as I say, what's the mm -hmm. point of dying with all that money in the bank? Yes. So, yeah. you know, it's I'm, I'm not saying just give it away. I like the idea of being a, what's the word, a, a benevolent millionaire or whatever. I forget the, I forget the name of it. Yeah. Um, but, um, Obviously, you have to look after yourself and everyone's entitled to a good life. And of course, with the eighth house, you're also entitled to a good death. But that's another matter. Yes. Um, yes. And but at the same time. What goes around comes around, spread it around. Yes. There's, there's no point in being. Tight, because then you get into that mindset and it, and it becomes pervasive amongst all the people around you. And that's how religions are founded, based on greed and power. And we what's we keep what is ours. Yeah, it is about. I mean, if you think about um, the second house being ruled by um, Venus, and Venus is about the heart and generosity and creativity. And if you're closing that down and stamping on it, then a whole raft of your life is not going to be firing up. This is true. 
But I think it would also be helpful here to actually step away from the altruism of money for a little bit and look at it from a more pragmatic perspective, because a lot of people are going to be looking in on this and going, yes, this is all very well, but how do I make some money? And there are certain... I know that when I'm dealing with a client, I will always, I will say once every 12 years, I'll go, ah, Jupiter's about to move into your second house for a year. So this doesn't mean that you're going to make lots of money. It, it does mean you're going to see the opportunity to make yes. lots of money. And if you take it, you'll thrive. So, so Jupiter passing through a second house is normally a good sign. It, it, I would anticipate a good 5 to 10% increase over a year with that. And the transits of Mars, um, solar eclipse, a lot of people don't like solar eclipses. I love them. I see them as brand new start points. Me Get too. Solar eclipse in your where's, this, where's this eclipse coming up on April the 8th in your chart? It's coming up in my 11th. It's in my 8th. Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, so um, I, should ah. probably, I should probably put five pounds instead of one pound on the lottery. <laughs> now, are you talking about the 11th? Also, what um, I can't remember, I read this a long time ago and I just wondered what you felt about it. But if you have planets in the second house and you mm. have, let's say, Jupiter or a benevolent um, planet in the 11th, because it's all to do with hopes and wishes, that apparently... Well, I can't remember which astrology was was saying this, can indicate luck to do with lottery wins. Would you say that? Because I would just sort of normally think that would be in the fifth house, the sort of house of gambling, fun, uh, Leo stuff. See, Lady Luck is fickle. Mm. And she is random with her affection. Dame Fortuna can be wooed. Right. You can attract fortune. You can make your fortune. You can earn your fortune. But it's a conscious effort on your part to do the right thing, to accrue wealth in whatever form wealth means to you. Whereas luck is not seducible. Luck is random. Mm. So I don't think there's such a thing as being born lucky. But I do think there's certain aspects in the chart that say that if you're doing it for the right reasons and you choose your times wisely, you can attract a lot of money. The, en the, the emphasis then, of course, will be, OK, so you've made a lot of money. Right. What are you going to do with it? Yes. If you're going to keep it for yourself and be greedy and, and then you won't get that opportunity again. Mm. I mean... If you have won all the money in the universe, would you change what you're doing? No, but I wouldn't mind. I'd set up a number of different universities and schools yes. and give bursaries. So that but you would still be in a thousands of astrologers. Yeah. You know, yeah I, obviously, I, I, just, I just put it to the service of humanity to try and improve yes. the, the consciousness of the, of the globe. And I think that's... That's abundance, isn't it? Knowing that you're doing what you want, love to do, and that's not up for grabs. Whatever happens, it is about, it's about, un, I, I call it like, um, for me, it's like, um, uh, you know, when we're, we're getting onto the beam and the locking the beam on, and when you're locked onto your beam, you're, what, what you're meant to be here to do, then that's yes. utter abundance. For me. But isn't that, yes, it is. But most people assume, uh, associate abundance and its opposite, paucity. Yes. With, um, with money. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And when you're caught in that downward spiraling loop of I've got to make money, I've got to make money, it's all that's important, then you're never going to make money. Or you're always going to be terrified it's going to be taken away. I think a yes. lot of people have that, don't they? That terrible fear. Yes. Well, if the newspapers and the television stations are to believe, there's lots of people out there who will try and con you out of your savings on the phone or on the website or with crypto or whatever. Uh, yes, I'm sure some of this exists. Mm. Some of it. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
But anyone who's astute enough, well, I mean, why would anyone of a right mind give away their pin code or something like that? It's, it's I, I, again, this, one, this, isn't it? It is. I suspect there's there's a lot of um, hype around this in, as as part of a sort of a ongoing systematic uh, dumbing down of society. Yes. Being deliberately polite there. I think it's. I think poverty is in really important to talk about as well. Poverty consciousness, um, and also this sort of sense that some people who are very wealthy will give everything up to become quite as. Yes quite aesthetic lives and I'm very yes. interesting about, uh, interested about the the transits that that inspire that to happen I just wondered if you would say a few words about that I know a good astrologer who has put quite a lot of her money into printing school books in the language of a local environment somewhere like Africa or India where that language is only spoken for like 50 miles in any direction. Wow. So those books are valueless anywhere else in the world. That's and I just thought that's a really good way of spending money to aid children's growth. Yes. The idea of um, fostering education, providing education uh, uh, in the right way is, is always in, so investing in the future. Mm. But what 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 would you say is when somebody like they goes to go I can't I don't want I don't want the money anymore I don't want the kudos I'm just going to live a very simple life what would you say would be the transit that might trigger that? Um, that would be a, a a something like a Pluto square or opposition to the to the Sun in the eighth or the Sun in the second, yes. or it would be something like the Saturn return where you think well wait a minute yeah I paid my mortgage. I've got quite enough money to buy my food for the rest of my life and pay my bills. Let's let's use the rest yeah. of it. Or maybe tenth house doesn't want to be out in the world anymore. Fourth fourth house uh, underpinning. Uh, lovely story the other day of that eighty four year old billionaire lady in 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 Canada who just stood up in front of the entire medical college and saying, "I'm giving this college a billion a billion dollars. You are now guaranteed your education free of charge to become doctors." No more, no more tuition. Wow. And the place erupted. 20,000 20, students suddenly realised their medical tuition fees over the next four years were going to be paid. Gosh, and that's it's... such a moving thing to hear somebody Oh, do. that's just a great story. Yeah. And she said, you can't take it with you. And yeah. you're not doing it for the, for the to have an, a, a statue or a building named after you. You're just doing it. Because it's because she wants, uh, not because for she, me to say it's the right it's thing right to do. do. Now, but that's our own individual ethics. It's it it makes it if, for me to do something like that. It would make me feel good, mm -hmm. and I don't need any other reason than that. I don't need even need to explain it to myself. Yeah, and I'm nobody just, need know anyway, because it isn't about that, is it? Really, it's not about that. It's no, just it's about doing good that's because it's a part. Random acts of kindness. Yeah. yeah. Just wanted to just in just fight to sort of finish off here. And um, why do you feel people are so secretive about money and nobody wants to know how much they earn or you know, it's a sort of it's like a dirty word. I think it's because we've been indoctrinated over the last two thousand years in the West of Christian and Hebraic culture and in the East from more, more Islamic, Hinduic, Indian culture, it's all about, based around power. Greed, yes. the, greed the wealthier you are, the more power you have. And as we've said a number of times before, it's not about being powerful, it's about being power filled. Yes. The more money you keep, you think you become more powerful, but actually you become more corrupt. The more you let money flow in, through, and around your life, the more you are the conduit for it, the more you become power-filled, 
Mm. And your life becomes better and the world becomes a better place. Mm. Sounds trite, sounds simplistic. It's not. To actually let go of money is a big thing for a lot of people. Or the attachment to the outcome of it, isn't it? Yes. Mm. It's an interesting. I'm, I'm, it's an interesting place to sort of um, contemplative place to to close this this chat. But I just think it's saying to anyone who's watching this, you know, do put in your comments below what your your relationship with money is about. We'd be really interested, wouldn't we, Steve? Mm. Yeah, yeah, very much. So. And share it, and um, you know, we can all learn from each other from each other's astrological. Philanthropist. That was the word I was looking for. Philanthropist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I had a lot of money, that's what I'd that's what I'd like to become a philanthropist. A philanthropist. Well, I'm totally up for that as well. Yeah, <laughs> well, to, thanks to, to, so to much. I've things. thoroughly enjoyed this conversation again. Yeah. Again. And, and we'll and see we'll, we'll see you next time. Yes, yeah, see you next time. Take care. Bye.